Making It with me, your host, Terry Wallman. I am here at the NAMM show today with Jeffrey Weber. Hi, Jeff. Hey, man. And we are broadcasting live with Entertalk Media and Caffeine, uh, streaming live and also a live audience. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. This is really a cool place to have conversations and an appropriate place. Um, I do want to tell you a quick moment about the show. Making it, I created the show to focus on what it takes to have a, a lasting career in the ever-changing landscape of the music business. And um, that's part of the reason that I wanted, Jeff, for you to be on the show today. Uh, let me just give a, a little bit of credits on you. Uh, Jeffrey Weber is a widely recognized music industry professional, well over 35 years. You've produced over 185 CDs. Uh, on just about every major label, as well as a host of independent labels. Along the way, you've yield, yielded two Grammys, seven Grammy nominations, 17 top 10 albums, probably more at this point, I'm <laughs> guessing, two number one albums, and an assortment of other honors. Um, so I, originally you and I met many years ago, um, and I knew you as a musician and a record producer, and um, we've been friends for a long time too, and we both, um, have similar career trajectories as record producers as well. Um, but here's the thing. <laughs> You're not here at NAMM talking about record production uh, or, or television production because you're also producing a, a TV show that you're developing that we'll talk about. You're here to talk about Bitcoin and blockchain. That's right. <laughs> so first of all, why do you even know what that is and how did you become an expert on this? Okay, full disclosure. <laughs> okay, last time, last year, my talk here was if you sign a major record deal, your career is over, right. and I can prove it. That's something I actually know about. Yeah. This year, I decided to try something that I actually had no knowledge of, no connection, no history with, because I wanted to learn about it. Right. What better way to create a panel where I could capture people who did know about it, who did understand the music business as it relates to blockchain and cryptocurrency, right. understand what a Bitcoin is, and then I can learn about it. Right. Because I think most everybody here doesn't know about it. Right. Uh, we know the term Bitcoin. We know the term. So recently, you probably know Dirk Schubert. Yeah. Dirk said, I'm mining Bitcoin in my basement. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> you know. So I thought I'd find out. Right. And that's the reason. And they accepted the topic, and uh, we're going to do. We're, we're going. It's coming now. A lot of people have been told to stay away from it. You know, imaginary money, buying real things. Right. Doesn't really sound terrific. Mm -hmm. You know. But and before we go further into this, you know, this is so perfect, Jeffrey, because again, the whole point of <laughs> making it in staying uh, relevant, relevant in the ever-changing landscape of the music business is to stay curious. Right. And to, to not be limited in your, you know, your interest or your areas of expertise. So this is a beautiful case in point on, on being curious and open-minded right. and open-hearted to learn something new. Correct. Back to you. <laughs> I just felt that we can't control whether it's coming or not coming. It's like mm -hmm. new technology, the turnaround time is so quick. Right. I don't know if it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but somebody has indicated that it's already here, that it's more important than silver, and I, I'm just wondering what's going on. I thought everyone else would want to know what's going on too, yeah. especially if you're a musician or a songwriter and you want to protect your rights. Right. Because this industry is only slightly known for the dark side. <laughs> Wink, wink. <laughs> well put. <laughs> right? Yeah. So if there is a way that we can protect ourselves, mm -hmm. we should do it. Yes. We should really do it. So as you have delved into this new area of expertise, um, that you're, and by the way, you're doing a panel tomorrow here at NAM. Tomorrow at 1 o'clock. At 1 o'clock. Um, tell, what do we need to know as musicians and artists about this new currency and technology? Pretty soon, you're going to be paid in Bitcoin. Pretty soon, I've been reading about that. you're going to have blockchain as the way that you protect your songwriting rights. Uh, these are going to be contracts that will be online, impervious to theft, impervious to all the different changes that could occur. It will be set in stone. and 
I'm going to find out what that is, you know, because what if it has to do with catalog? Right. What if it has to do with re-releasing prior records that you have right. into a new world? Right. Many of us own the masters to Correct. Our, our recording catalogs. Correct. Mm -hmm. We are in a 90-day turnaround, so if you put something out today in 90 days, no one will remember, right. which gives us the opportunity to re-release things again. You view that as an opportunity and not as a down... I think it's a feature, not a flaw. <laughs> well, it's a good way to go through life. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, because I think people have very short memories because we're bombarded by all of these things every single day. And somebody said it's over a thousand. Imagine if you were solicited over a thousand times. You'd want to slap somebody at the end of the day. <laughs> but because we're doing it digitally and all this other stuff, we don't realize it. We're just kind of numb to it. Right. So we forget. Have you seen contracts yet where payment is um, is being offered in the form of Bitcoin? I haven't. But but it's coming. But I've seen signs that we accept Bitcoin, right. you know, for merchants and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how that works. Uh, I don't know. You know, there's not a, a ATM for Bitcoin. You, right. You know what I mean? And by the way, there is no such thing as a Bitcoin. It's... It, it's an imaginative friend. Correct. It's some right. Right. <laughs> it's your pretend friend. And I'm a little. Which is kind of what money actually is, anyway. When we really come down to it, Isn't it, it is true? true. But I'm kind of scared right now because yeah. I really don't know where this is going. Yeah. You know, and if it's imaginary money, how come the value of it skyrockets and plummets? Is there some guy sitting in a basement who just presses a button and the thing goes up and the thing goes... Where is this valuation coming right, from? Right. I don't know. Okay. I'd like to find out. That's why I created the panel. So what is blockchain? Because we've all heard the term Bitcoin, but not really blockchain. Blockchain, to my kind of infirm knowledge of the mm -hmm. thing, is a, a transaction memory. Okay. Uh, a history that's unapproach that's beyond reproach that sustains it's almost like a chain of uh, a chain of command so mm -hmm. in other words we can tell where the where the contracts came from who they're for who they're to who gets the proceeds and i, I want to say it's in the cloud but i'm not exactly certain how to explain it so that i understand right. and hence that's why i created the panel right so i can at least be semi-intelligent about it, mm -hmm. not like I am now. <laughs> um, will you promise me at a future date to get back to me on what you learn about this so that we can absolutely um, in share this information with our, our radio audience as well? I have decided that, you know, my whole career is based on the following principle that if I don't know anything about it, if I have no history in it, if I have no contacts in it, if I shouldn't be doing it, that means I'm totally qualified. <laughs> well, I mean, that makes sense because we do that in music. All the time. When somebody goes, can you, do you play polka? And it's like, yes, I do. Yes, you if, do. It, and you say that with confidence if you know that within the time frame, the 24 hours that you have to get it together. You will. You become adept at polka. You don't become an expert. <laughs> you will. And it, but you will, and it keeps you working. And it keep, as, as long as you're smart about it. Right. Yeah, you know, and, and don't step into, you know, you still kind of want to stay in your lane to some degree. Right. But if, if all you did was stay in your lane, we, you would not have a career in the music business, likely. I think you have to take chances. Yes. And step out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. And the rewards are greater than playing it safe. Right. You know, and that's what we try to do. That's mm -hmm. what you do. Yeah. That's what we try to do. Right. Uh, you know. Well, you've based, as a record producer, you've based your career on that because you're, mm -hmm. you're known for live to two-track recording. Right. You know, and just, you know, putting great people in a room together and pushing them off, fly little birdies, you know, off well, the cliff. Live two-track is... It's exciting. It's an exciting but dangerous way to record. Yes. That's why I'm great. Uh, <laughs> I'm only 20. Uh, but live two track is in the moment. Yes. You know, we want to capture performance rather than manufacture one. There's no option for redoing anything. You'd have to redo the song in its entirety. There's yeah. no mixing, no editing, no overdubbing. Right. It's and people forget that it's it's there's no remixing <laughs> there's in no live remixing. to two track. You were in the hot seat as much as everybody else on right. the other side of the glass. We're not going to put makeup on you. This right. is the real deal yeah. in real time. Real musicians playing real music in yeah. real time. And 
for me, it's sonically superior, emotionally more satisfying, and believe it or not, financially more feasible. Right, absolutely. You know, you don't have to do the mixing, there's no overdub, so right. it takes less time to make the record. Right. Sure, it's more dangerous, but I'm finding that true musicians like you mm -hmm. go into it going, oh, we got this, yeah. this is what I do anyway. That's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And but on the other side of the fence, people who aren't sure of themselves back away like this is the play. Yeah. Oh, dude, you know, no, you can do it. And if they're worried, they play tentatively, right. you know, they want to, quote, get it perfect, which yeah. you and I both know that's not going to happen because right. there's no such thing. Yeah. But making big mistakes means you're trying something and there's magic in what you do. Yes. And oftentimes we're surprised as producers and, you know, that's where the magic comes yeah. from. Yeah. Not knowing. Not knowing. I love that. So you, you are also in... <laughs> you were also in television development right now. You right. are developing a TV show that has a mentoring aspect to it as well, which is fantastic because you and I are both big proponents of music education and absolutely and, and supporting our next generation or always our up-and-coming musicians. We decided that we wanted to create a musical competition show with no celebrities, with the focus being entirely on the contestants. Right. So we've created a panel of mentors, of which I'm proud to say that you are one of them. I'm excited about that. That Thank you. will allow experienced people who've worked with a plethora of artists mm -hmm. to really give the insight to an aspiring musician or performer mm -hmm. as to what it really takes to move their career or to elevate their career to the next level. Now, the television shows that are currently on the air, The Voice, American Idol, um, America's Got Talent, we understand that those shows were not designed for the contestants to be successful. Those shows are not even about music, they're about television shows. Mm -hmm. And so if you're putting a television show on the air, it's all about eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Believe me, the best thing that could ever happen to one of those shows is if a contestant had an affair with the judge. Right. Oh wait, the that already happened. <laughs> <laughs> the ratings went whoop. Yes. So as well, the audience nods <laughs> along, yes. Right. So <laughs> what we're about, what we're about is saying, hey, listen, we're going to help you sustain your career. We have mentors such as Terry, who are great musicians, songwriters, producers, but also engineers and and personal trainers, so that you can know how to be, take care of yourself when you're on the road. Right. We have vocal coaches, we have songwriters, mm -hmm. we have the vice president of Sirius XM Radio, we have amazing engineers, we have, uh, we have people that will tell the contestants about success, the dark side of success, right. the upside of failure. You Which, know. by the way, you've, that leads to, you've written books about this as well, you're an author too. I wrote two books about our business, which are humor books, really, but every <laughs> humor truth. book, right. The first one's called, and thank you for asking, Yeah, you've got a deal, the biggest lies of the music business. Perfect, I know. And the, the sequel is called, we'll get back to you, even bigger lies of the music business. <laughs> so, you know, and, and let me just. But based on information, it's not a joke book. No, like for. It comes from a humorous place, but it, it's based it, on. In humor, there is truth. Always. Right? Yeah. And also there's tragedy because one of the stories in the book is about a new artist who calls, he just got signed to a major label, he calls the A&R guy to find out what he thought of this new record. So, hey man, this is, this is Terry, I'm just calling you to find out what you thought of my new record. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? And the guy goes, well, I don't know. I'm the only one that's heard it. That's the tragedy of our business. Right. Hey. If he likes it, it must be good, so I like it. One of the reasons that I have been an independent recording artist and a Billboard Top 10 artist as well, because I have more control over my career. And, and you, you can take it in your own hands. And there's so many artists that, J Jeffrey, you and I both know, that are very established. And the more established they are, the better that, that model works now. Um, no diss to any major record labels out there that are actually doing the good work, you know, and promoting people, but it's really, it's, it's in our hands as artists too. Well, um, again, a, a major label is designed to increase the value of 
shares for their shareholders. Right. That's their first priority. We, as the creatives, are not. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say, Terry, you release one of your records and it finds favor with an audience. Mm -hmm. So they will make that over and over again, or they will push that over and over. Right. But let's say I make a record and there is no visibility or attraction, they throw that record out and put a new one in its place. Mm -hmm. Almost like an eraser or a hubcap or you know something that if it doesn't sell, we're right. going to do it again right. with somebody else. Exactly. But there goes my career, right? right? Yeah. So the numbers don't work either. So if we sell, a whole, I'll just to give you a quick example, if we sell a record for $10 wholesale, as independence, that $10 goes to our bottom line. Mm -hmm. If we sell a CD for $10 wholesale on a major label, they're going to go, no, no, no. You, you have to give us $8.50 out of that. Right. The money that you're going to pay us back is only the equivalent of what you actually make, which is your artist royalty. Right. And by the way, artwork is recoupable and promotion is recoupable to the record label, you know, the old paradigm. Exactly. Yeah. And what happens is they end up outsourcing everything that they do and charging it back to the artist at 100%. Yeah. So there's no cost to doing business. Right. This is, as they say, not a way to run an airline. <laughs> so. so to wrap this up, because we are coming to the close of this interview, um, where can people find out more about you and also your up-and-coming TV show that you're working on? The TV show uh, is called Rise Up With Me. So riseupwithmetvshow.com, okay. riseupwithmetvshow.com is where you'll find out more about the show. We're going to start auditions in eight cities beginning in January of next year. Please see me if you want an opportunity to join the competition. It's open yeah. to everybody. Now's a, now's a good time actually for people to get involved in the show because it's still in development. So right. you, you're actually more accessible now than you might be in January. Maybe, maybe. maybe. <laughs> you know, who knows. But you'll be able yeah. to see Terry mm -hmm. discussing things on the television show and online more extensively. So mm -hmm. there is a, a wealth of learning to be done and I'm super excited about Terry because these are the type of professionals that have a lot to give, right? Right? Yeah. We and all, uh, we it, it's yeah. not just like, oh, I'm, I'm just working for myself. Terry's worked for so many people, but he watches. He sees how they treat other people. Mm -hmm. He sees their work ethic. Right. He sees what's going on, and he wants you to know that. And that's how you elevate your career. And you've created a panel of artists, um, and not just artists, producers, engineers, business people, that um, all have the same point of view. Correct. Of wanting to share the information that we have and the information we wish that we had when we were starting our careers as well. So That's right. Um, so I'm very proud to be a part of your up and coming show. Oh, it's great. We thank you. It's it's my pleasure. Yeah. You know, and we have people from other shows leave their shows to join this show. Right, right. Because Perfect. this is yeah. real. Thank you for joining me once again. I'm Terry Wallman. You're listening to Making It and we're here live at the NAM show streaming with Intertalk Media and Caffeine with record producer Bitcoin new expert <laughs> and uh, TV mogul Jeffrey Weber. Thank you so much. Thank Jeff. you, Terry. I'm so honored. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.